Um, I want to talk about uh, a couple of things that not always are connected. Uh, it's the Mayan calendar and the, the much discussions that are being held about the end of the calendar in, uh, around the year 2012. And the economic situation and uh, the nature of money, uh, which is a different thing, but it's something that you can understand uh, much more deeply if you have a background in the Mayan calendar. So... <clears throat> I'd like to start by just pointing out that you hear a lot of things going on out there about the Mayan end date. There are, <coughs> on YouTube, there are... <coughs> So I wanted to talk about uh, two things that I think are not always connected, but really deserve to be connected. And one is the Mayan calendar and its end date that is coming up fairly shortly. And the other is about the world's economic situation, about the creation of money and the nature of money. And which is really something that brings it home to us, like an, something that really uh, imp influences our everyday lives. And this has to do, in order to understand the, the process that the world is in now, I think the best way is to look uh, uh, upon it against the background on the Mayan calendar. And as you may know, uh, in 2012, there will be this end date of the Mayan calendar. And some people, and you can see on YouTube, for instance, uh, shootings about a doomsday 2012. And there's coming up a Hollywood movie uh, later this year, which uh, pre presents this date as some kind of a preset doomsday. Like, that is the day the world will come to an end. And it's ve really very ridiculous, this whole thing, if you look at upon it from the, the actual sources to this presumed date. It's, in other words, if we go back to the ancient Mayan sources, they never, ever say that the world is coming to an end. The, the only actual inscription that exists from the ancient times about this date is the one that says, on that particular date, nine gods will descend. Now, that's a little bit tricky to understand, maybe, because gods to the Maya is not exactly what we would talk about it as today. In other words, to the Maya, each time period was a god. So, really, what, what is happening is that nine time periods, nine evolutionary wave movements are coming to an end at the, that date. And it's much more useful and much more truthful to look upon that date as a date when all of these processes is coming to a f fulfillment in order to create the birth of a new world. Typically, if you look at these um, Mayan pyramids that are built in, in nine stories that you find in the central locations of, of many of the tem ancient temple sites, they are built in nine levels. So, in other words, they represent each of them one of these gods, which is really time periods or evolutionary pro progressions that are then coming to, to an end. So, <clears throat> to continue, I, I need to make a little bit of a bi basic outline of how the Mayan calendar is structured. It's like nine levels of evolution each symbolized by these uh, uh, terraces on the pyramid. Now, each of these nine uh, um, levels of evolution was then subdivided into what they would call 13 heavens, which again are time periods that are constituting a wave movement. And uh, today... If you study the Mayan calendar, you will find that whenever there is a shift in this wave movement, when it goes up into the peak or when it goes down into the valley, 
you can see that significant things happen in evolution. I'm talking about evolution as human history. Because in the Mayan perspective, we're all part of an evolution that is designed by the cosmic uh, forces. What is happening on the planet and in, on Earth, it, it's not unrelated to a cosmic plan. We're living in a cosmic plan, and this cosmic plan is coming to a fulfillment in, in, a, in a short period of time. So, each of these, there are nine levels, and each of those would be developed by 13 different gods, as they would say. And today we would probably better use the word 13 different cosmic energies. And these energies, they go like from a seed to a mature fruit. It is, each one of them is like an organic uh, process of evolution. And this is something that also uh, affects, it affects everything, I should say. But specifically, uh, and that's what I'll address in this particular talk, it affects how human relates to one another in what we call economy. And uh, <clears throat> one of the things that are currently much discussed is the nature of money. How is money created and so forth? And one way of looking at it then is through the perspective of the Mayan calendar where um, we can track the seed to a mature fruit. And so, for instance, when the, the sixth level of these underworlds began about 5,000 years ago, all that existed in terms of human economic exchange was bartering. And, but then you, we can see that as a result of the effects of this, uh, of this particular uh, evolutionary level, uh, we go away step by step from this real value uh, um, th that are used in, in bartering until we come to the last and the thirteenth of these heavens when that is being replaced by paper money. And uh, <clears throat> that goes on, and another, on top of that, another such uh, underworld, another such uh, evolutionary level is activated. And that particular level, it, it started with... Um, uh, Sorry, we're going to do that money section again. 